Saira, um, just to recollect what we were discussing last week, um, Swami has introduced us to the verse Manmana Bhava Mat Bhakto Matyaji Man Namaskuru, and that you know Swami is telling Krishna, Swami is repeating what Krishna told Arjuna that uh, one should always constantly think of the Lord, offer everything to the Lord bow down to him and surrender to him alone and so on. Then Swami is also saying that uh, that it is only, even jnanis find it difficult to understand him. So it's not necessary, not easy for a common person like Arjuna to understand. Um, so I think those were some of the themes which we discussed last week. So I will stop here. I will uh, ask sisters to continue from where we left off. Manmanabhava Madbhakto Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru. This command of the Lord means just this. Keep your mind steadily on me. Be devoted sincerely to me. Prostrate before me, offering all your thoughts, words, and deeds to me. Love me steadfastly, he has commanded. He has thus indicated that what he most desires in you are a pure mind and untarnished love. Immersed in Madhavatattva, humanness, you cannot attain Madhavatattva, Madhavaness. You have to attain Madhavatattva to get Madhavahood. To see the darkness, you must have darkness only. To see light, you should have light. To understand intelligence, you have to be intelligent. If you are constantly active about human things, how can you realize the glory of divinity? To become divine, you have to dwell in the memory of the divine. Act divinely, behave divinely. The state, the environment, and the feeling all must be coordinated for that one purpose. Then only can the principle be grasped. It is on the basis of this truth that Krishna continued thus, Arjuna, jnanis are superior even to the gods who are in their turn superior to men. But these jnanis too are unable to grasp the full import of God. How then can ordinary men like you ever understand it? At this sly dig, Arjuna bent his head in shame. He said, yes, I agree, Krishna. You are beyond the grasp of anyone however intelligent he may be. You are of endless manifoldness. I am convinced. You are the universal absolute. I know. Thank you, sister. So I think we had discussed this last week also. So if there's anything anyone would like to bring to everyone's attention, please do. Uh, Swami is talking about that we should cultivate divine qualities in us so that we can even understand the Lord. That's something I don't know whether we all discussed about, but uh, second paragraph states that So if everyone is okay, maybe we can move on. And Norma, though, would you like to read? Sure, okay. Sarah. I believe that you have created the entire universe and that you are fostering it and presiding over both the evolution and involution of the worlds that you are the master of Shristi, creation, stiti, sustenance, and laya, dissolution. You have told me this yourself. I am ever grateful for this, and I am happy that I was considered worthy. But how, in what forms are you imminent in the universe you have brought into being? I long to hear it from you and make myself worthier to be 
be alive, said Arjuna. And which among these various forms am I to med meditate upon? Tell me, so that I can meditate likewise and save myself, he pleaded. A pretty small question that, said Krishna, with a smile. Perhaps you felt that you can easily understand the answer if given, right? Since the question has been put, I shall melt a little and give the answer. Listen carefully. I am the inner Atma in the lotus car heart of each and every being. So, if you believe that direct your life on the basis of the belief that the inner Atma in every being is my Paramatma, that is enough dhyana for you. See that this belief is not shaken or overthrown. Stick to it steadily. Practice that, that belief. Apply it in your deeds, words and thoughts. Then the experience of oneness, of you, of your being me and I being you can be achieved. Thank you, sisters. Um, I think Saira Manti, maybe we should, uh, can we read then? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, Mire Charachara Prapanchumna Sushti Stiti Layamulu Gavin Chuchunarani Namitini. Arjuna is telling Krishna, I understood, I, I believe that you are the one who are the response, you are responsible for the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the entire world. The moving and the immovable world. Miru kuda swayamuga telpitri danyudano. You you also have told this uh, on by on your own, and thanks for that. Aite, i lokamana miru mi shakti maya maya na roopa mulano yetlu darinchu sunnaru. Then. You know, in this world, uh, you how are you donning the various forms with which are uh, filled with your own uh, uh, energy and power? There are many forms, and how do you do that? Anaga, miru ye ye rupamana yi jagatunu vyapichu chunnaro vati antini. That means whatever forms which you are taking on and you have, you have spread in this entire world, please show me all that and make my life worthwhile. Mario Neno Nino Eru Pumano Dianin Chavaleno, Adino Salavichina, Atlu Dianitun Krishna, Ani Vedukunan. So not only that, uh, if you if you can tell me the form in which I can meditate on you, please tell me that also, so that I can meditate on that form, our oh Lord Krishna. Arjuna, chala chinna kori kine kori tivi. Arjuna, you have asked a very small request. Idi nikan, idi nikan ta sulabhumuga artha magunanu kuntiwa. Do you think that you will be able to understand it easily? Adi kiti vi kanuka dayato dalpudano. We know. Because you have asked, I will. I will lovingly tell you, listen. Sakala Bhutamula Yokka Hrade Kamala Mulandu Andundu Prategatmanu Nene. I am the the inner Atman which who is present in every living being's uh, lotus heart. Dinine Atma Nyanduru. And this is called as Atma. 
if you meditate on that that's enough anaga sarva bhutamala yokka pratyagatma ani vishwasinchina chaluno ade dhyanam if you understand if you believe that the atman in every living being that's enough that itself is dhyana atti vishwasamunaku pratibandhakamulu kalugaka dridavratudaiva aacharanamula yendu nirupana salipinapade neeve nenu nene neevu anu anubhavam ponduthu ade ekatvam అట్టి విశ్వాసం దృఢవ్రతుడై ఆచరణ వల్ల ఎందు నిరూపణ సలిపినను నీవే నేను నేనే నీవు అని అనుభవం పొందుదు విత్ ఫర్మ్ డిటర్మినేషన్ if you uh, practice it and prove it then you become me and i become you and such an experience with that experience you will feel have a sense of unity oneness you will have you um, oneness oneness i think we should, she stopped there yeah i think krishna is sarcastically telling you know <laughs> you have asked a simple question <laughs> sairamana i'm oh, sorry Sairamana. quick question in the last paragraph right like in the english swami i mean they're saying that the, believe that the inner atma in every being is my paramatma but mm. when you translated for the telugu you didn't mention the paramatma because you kept mentioning atma right so is there like is here it's like kind of atma paramatma is like a kind of swami, dual swami has not mentioned swami is not used the word paramatma yeah it's pratyagatma and atma are the same pratyagatma yeah each one individualize also you can say i think it's sorry aunty ah pratyag pratyek in each and uh, in each and every in each of them each and every yeah. in each and every one is pratyek uh, the word can be pratyekamuga nenu cheppudunu for use and i tell you separately uh it is not uh, my paramatma is not uh, this thing yeah it, oh. it's misleading little bit anyone would like to share anything um so swami is saying that if you if you think that i am the atma inside every living being that itself is dhyanam mm, yes you know we before had discussed how like it's kind of impossible to do that is in what way is um swami expecting us to do that or and before we thought i thought we mentioned before how like just visualizing that you know every person is swami that's not really um like we won't really have this understanding or this feeling until we become realized ourselves i think swami understands that's why krishna is telling do you think you can understand when i say <laughs> and that is very you know uh, uh, it's a loaded statement from krishna that is not that easy to understand that uh, 
but he says because you've asked, I'm telling you. I, I think I think Swami is uh, with a few sentences he is nicely telling. He's telling first you understand that the Atman within you is Atman. Then he says the next step is to see the Atman in everyone. Then that he says is meditation. I think that's the way I read it. But I will open it up for others to share their thoughts as well. Anyone would like to comment on this, please? Sai Ram. Sai Ram, Sai Ram Ati. Yeah. Uh, in all beings, inner dwelling Atma is also Krishna. And when you start thinking, all the Atmas in all living beings is one, then it becomes Paramatma. The oneness of the all the Atmas becomes Paramatma. That's what uh, Bhagavan is teaching. When you believe that and uh, steadily believe and meditate on that and practice your thought, words, and deeds at all times, believing that, then you will experience my presence. This, this is what I understood. I hope I am right. Please correct me if I am wrong. Thank you very much, Auntie. Thank you very much. Anyone else Thank would you. like to share your thoughts, please? Uh, Sai Ramana, um, I was just going to say um, in the context of like how we do Jyoti meditation, uh, first we say the light is in me, then we say I am in the light, and then last stages I and the light are one. So going along the same way with what Swami was saying and what you were also saying a few minutes ago, that first is to visualize the presence or feel that presence within us. And then when we feel that presence within us, we extend, once we know what we are, it extends to the framework of recognizing what others are, which broadly gets us to a state of moving from the light is within me to I am in the light because that same light is there radiant in every person, every individual, every being. And then ultimately go beyond with that concentration contemplation leading to that constant meditation that there is no difference between me and the light, I and the light are one in the same. So just wanted to put it in the context of how we do Jyoti meditation, the same can apply here as well. All right. Thank you very much, Saisa. Anyone else? You know, it's, um, I don't know, you know, Arjuna is asking, Swami, show me all, the, tell me about all the forms you have. You know, so I was just thinking, in this, there's 1.4 billion people, human beings. This, oh, sorry, 6 billion now or 7 billion, I don't know. And if, you know, everyone is so unique also, you know, how can Krishna explain how I own this and that? But I think uh, what it's like, you know, in a pot of you know, rice, when it's cooked, you can just take one or two and then you know the experience is same as any other rice grain in the same pot. And I think once we can experience divinity within us, the Atman, I think that easily gets extended everywhere also. Also, Anna, it's like that same, that Kasturi Mrugam, which goes everywhere, searches for that fragrance emanating outside. But then at the end of the day, when it keeps its head close to its navel, it re realizes that's where it's the fragrance is emanating from. 
so I, I think more than looking for it on the outside, it is to essence it on the inside. And once we essence it on the inside, we see the reflection of it on the outside. So and I think um, um, Arjuna was like asking for the question bank and everything. Like, you give me all the forms you take and you please tell me of all the forms you have taken, which one I should meditate on. So you tell me everything so that uh, you can also give me mukti uh, incidentally, that kind of a framework. So I think, yeah. So Sairam, brother, you Sairam. saw me saying this paragraph, even if you started to think, I mean, all living being movable, immovable, that itself say meditation for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Yes, brother. Sorry. Thank you. Akamala Mulandundu. What does that mean? Hridaya Kamala Mulandu. Hridaya Kamala Mulandu. So the Hridaya is Hridaya Kamala Mula means inside the Hridaya Kamala. Oh. Andu undu. You understand? Means that which exists, it's uh, which is present in that. Okay. Inside the lotus of heart. Kamala Mulandu undu. Okay. Undu means it's there. It's it? there, exactly. And then the last line, um, prati bandha kamulu. Prati bandha anything which binds you, you know, it stops you, hurdles, obstacles, oh. difficulties. Sariya, auntie. Ah, absolutely. Sariya, prati bandha kamulu. Prati bandha kamulu kaluga ka dhruda vratudai. Firm, with a firm heart. Dhruda vratudai. Taking a vow. That, uh, determination, yeah, determination. Mm. In in your acharana, in your uh, practice, show prove that nirupana salipina pre nena nivu nivu neno. Nirupana means prove. Nirupana, yeah, proof. Sariya? Yes, and yes, and I also feel means we have to prove for ourselves. You know, I think then that's the meaning of nirupana. Let me just check here. So we are approaching that Vishwarupa Darshanam slowly. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Nirupana also can be mean ascertaining, seeing also, taking shape, taking form. Rupa. Rupa can be taken. Nirupa. We can say embodying also, I guess. So is this just like a kind of an impossible practice or is, is, is it beneficial to try to practice? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's impossible, but Krishna, I think I was telling that it may take a lot of effort. It was impossible, you would have told. So, but I think, you see, ultimately, um, anything is impossible, everything is impossible when you think we have, only we are doing it. Mm. When we know and believe that it is uh, the Lord who will make it happen, you know, then it's different. Manmana, bhavamad, bhakto, matya, jimam, namaskuru. Mama wish, yes. you know, there it's already told. You think of me, meditate on me, then you will become me. That means it's in his hands at that point in time. Mam Namaskuri. So I think the, everything in this world is impossible if we are doing it by ourselves. Everything is possible when the Lord is doing it. And so I think uh, surrender is the best way of 
for us to do. And he, Krishna has given the assurance in the previous the, the paragraphs. We saw Krishna saying, think of me and there is no doubt you will come to me. Yeah. I think that's the way. Yeah. So, Sairam, brother, for the example is, uh, what we see is phenomena. So, we are in the uh, Maya. So, if you want to see the reality, we need the goat vision. So, in order to get the goat vision, we have to follow his teaching with the faith. So, only he is the one can give the goat vision. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Here, the sentence. Yes, yes. Just to have to have the faith that divinity faith. in all and recognize that divinity in everyone. The, it is a, and you can contemplate upon it. Thank you. Uncle Gopalan, please go ahead. I think, Uncle, maybe we can't hear you. Just see some sound. I think some issue with your sound. He's using earphone. Yeah, he's using some mic and earphone. That is not actually working. Anyone else? I don't have the word, the translation they say, inner Atma, every being is my Paramatma. Now that's why I think we should, I think that's for us to, okay. Yeah. That faith in divinity in, present in everyone, Pratibandha Kamalu Kalugaka without any obstruction coming in between you and that recognition of the divinity. Mm -hmm. If it happens, then, you know, you can uh, uh, you can feel that I am you, you are, you, you, and you are my, me. Sairam. Sairam. Sairam this one principle uh, uh, in in the practical sense, uh, we can we can you know they tell you know the the Almighty uh, God or you know the, the Lord Krishna or Swami that you know, the, you and me are the same. I tell you everything. You tell me everything, and uh, I feel you are within me, and I feel uh, you may feel you know, the. I am within yourself, and uh, so this this principle it would be applicable to other people too. Uh, according to Swami's philosophy, when we you know, they salute someone, you know, when we meet, say Sai Ram, and you know, they put the namaskar and everything, that means that you know, they, uh, you and me are the same, or you and me are the one, and everything. It's uh, all the you know, the all the thoughts, words, and deeds, and everything for the well-being of both, or for the community, or or for the country, and those things. But uh, uh, in practical, why why this question raised in my mind? Uh, Sister Kalyani asked whether is it easy to practice you know, the, uh, in our day-to-day -day life? You know the with goat, you know, the, the, I can, uh, I can imagine, or I can trust, and I can tell everything. And but the day to day dealings with the other people, this one principle or theory, whether it would work, you know, the that's the question it raised in my mind. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, sister. Thank you for the question, Uncle Gopal is back. Hopefully, we can hear him this time. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Sir. Please. Okay. Sairam, sorry about that. Uh, 
first of all, we are all Sai devotees. We've been with Swami for so long. And uh, all of us have had some experiences. So the question is, how long can you continually experience God? Okay, this is a this is a thing that Swami has assured us. If you keep on trying, eventually you you will get it. If you don't believe that, then then uh, uh, it's uh, I think we are we are not understanding Swami's message. So all of us are experiencing. Every moment we're experiencing, but we don't realize it. We are experiencing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Because Sister Ananti has asked a question. I think it's an extension of Kalyana's question. Or I think it's a Narmada's question. But it's easy to experience. It's whether it's possible to experience. Anyone would like to share any thoughts, please? Kalyani asked question. When you See, meditate with God, can you? It's very, Swami has said it's very hard to experience. Divinity everywhere. See, one of the, see, I think, see, sometimes we, see, knowing that we are divine, I think, see, our mind plays a big trick. You know, suddenly we close our eyes and we imagine, you know, visualize that, you know, we are Swamis within us, you know, even the Jyoti meditation or whatever. But, you know, while we open the eyes and then we go about, that is completely forgotten. That experience, you know, that imaginary experience doesn't last. Then we also can just look at other person and so oh, that person is divine, this person is divine. But I think one of the things which Swami has said here is we should experience oneness. Then oneness means that also we imagine it's something, you know. Suddenly, you know, there's a huge mass and all of us are in an engulfed some light and we are one. You know, this kind of a visualization happens. But I think um, Sister Anandi had this question, how is it practically possible? I think that is that's a very nice way to approach this. Um, see, in life, when some when we are striving for something, and that someone else is also trying for the same thing, we don't get what we hoped for, but the others have got it. Now, these are situations when. We can really cultivate how to feel oneness. At that point in time, if another person has got what we were seeking, if we develop the same level of joy as if we have gotten it, that means we feel that person is an extension of us. Yeah. For example, if my hand gets cut, I don't say, oh, my hand got cut, I didn't get cut. My foot got cut, I will not say my foot got cut, but I didn't get cut. I identify with that also as an extension of me, a part of me. So I think when we can take other people's success, uh, others having what we don't have, these are great opportunities God gives us actually to know that, uh, oh, I have achieved through the other person. The other person's joy is me being happy. Uh, if we can cultivate that, um, it's it, that's a most wonderful thing. And uh, you know, Swami, I, maybe I'm taking it because no one is talking. I will just there are two three things which Swami used to tell us. Swami will say, all of you will write exam, and when the marks comes and it's published. All of you rush to see whether your name is there. You all don't care absolutely about what, who else's name is there or not there. Then Swami says, you know, you take a group photo. When the print photo print comes, you will see whether you look good in that. And as long as you're looking good, you are happy. 
you know, do you look at everyone and say well, they are also looking good? Uh, with others also have passed. If others have passed, we should be happy that you know um, God gives us these opportunities to practice this all the time in this world. But I think we lose that opportunity. So I think that's another way to see everyone as an extension of us. Um, others' happiness is our happiness. Other sorrow is also. It's easy to feel other people's sorrow. Uh, you know, we'll say, oh, they are sad. We are also sad. Actually, we are, we are happy that we are not in that situation, but we feel sad for the other person. That becomes easy. But when somebody is happy, are we happy? That's a little problem. When, so when, so, when, so. Somebody, when somebody is happy, the, the next feeling is jealousy. <laughs> he is happy, I am not happy. You, that f first uh, reaction comes to a person, normally it comes, but when we start feeling that his pleasure, his uh, happiness is my happiness, that uh, that proves that we are a little step further towards the divinity. Yes, go ahead, Sasha. No, no, I was just going to say, I think uh, Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu is nothing but essences that oneness because in the welfare of everyone rests my wellness because I, I think it, it just takes away the distinction between the individual and the absolute. Everything becomes one in that prayer. So just wanted to add to what you were saying. Thank you, Sai Sakesh. Anyone else? I don't know. Sister Anandi asked the question, so you know these thoughts came to me. I don't know if anyone else also would like to share anything. Oh, Ram, brother. Yes. So that's what Swami said clearly here. The Lord Krishna said, "I am in movable and immovable. You have to believe on that one. So I am the one there. We are we are just taking the body. If you look at us, it's like you are looking at the body only, but you are not." Uh, believing the truth, what is absolute? So, but we are believing on the out, uh, outside appearance. Once you understand this concept, same Atma is living uh, uh, in all forms, then you will see the oneness. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much. Sister Aruna, I think you were trying to say something. You know, Brother Saira, um, you know, uh, the one one sentence it says that um, Paramatma in, it's in everything. So we always look at it as a, like a living beings, right? Isn't it covers the innate true, uh, innate material? Yes. Inanimate. So that part, we don't think that... Uh, Usually, it doesn't come to our mind that God is in that too, right? So, but here, in order to understand the oneness, you are not the extension. You are not thinking on the only the living beings. Other other things also you have to consider. Kind of. This is my thinking. I'm going into my mind. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, Saira. Sorry, I'm uncle, like, is it possible to not feel jealous, like, if you still harbor that same desire? Or, like, is it only, like, you have to let go of the desire in order to really feel happy for the other person? Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, can you repeat the question? Like, I guess, how do you overcome that jealousy? Um, yeah. Is uh like, do you have to completely let go of your desire for that thing? Or even while still having the same desire, can you be happy for it. Very good question, Kalyani. I will open it up. So I think Sister Kalyani is asking, how do we overcome the sense of jealousy? Do we give up our desire for that something which we wanted to achieve? Um, should we give that up? Uh, that those are questions, I think. Uh, yes, Auntie, you were saying something? See, Satvika Guna, all of us have a little bit of it. With, with the rajo, rajas and tamas, if we can develop and then increase our sattvic guna, sattvikatva, then slowly I think we, over, we can overcome that kind of feeling 
when somebody is happy, we should also be happy. That comes to us when, uh, gradually. It doesn't come in uh, just a, a, the thought of it. But we have to develop that sattvic guna so that you know we can uh, reach to, up to that point where you know we feel the oneness with others. Saira. Thank you very much. Saira. Sorry, Saira Manna. I think yes. one question Kalyani has, which I also have, I think one is that uh, the desire. So what if two people are desiring for the same thing? Can you have the desire still and not be jealous? Or is it the desire that is causing the jealousy? So you're not supposed to have that. I think that's what... Yes, that I understand. Is. Yeah, exactly. So you have reworded the same question. I think yeah. it's Kalyani had asked. Thank you. You don't have an answer, do you? <laughs> I am um, asking the question. I'm still trying to. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Good, good. Yes, I said this. She was saying. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, so I think um, it's um, this experience of uh, Swami speaking to one boy and the other boy feeling happy that Swami spoke to him, the other person, because he was his brother and the question came back to the same thing if he was not his brother would he feel the same happiness so one thing is if he really feel that happiness it 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 gets the extension it gets the feeling of vasudeva kutumbakam it is literally like my own family member has got it uh, if i apply it from the worldly sense it is i am related to them in some physical way but if i can a sense it in the Vasudeva Kutumbakam that the whole universe is one family, the happiness that we get itself takes care of the desire. Because what they say, the best way to achieve something in life is to offer gratitude and stay in that feeling of having received it already. Because what happens is ultimately what we feel from within is what manifests from without. And in that state of happiness, when we are feeling genuinely happy for somebody else achieving it, the whole thing of manifestation will turn around to create that for us in that in feeling that happiness. Uh, in feeling that happiness, because in that feeling happiness, if we truly extend it, it also goes to a level of gratitude for having received it, whether it is somebody else or it applies to us by ourselves. Because in that moment, what we feel is what gets taken care of ultimately. So what I'm saying is, if we truly feel happiness for the other person, that desire not only gets fulfilled for that person and they have anyway are happy, but in that feeling happy for that person, that desire gets or uh, attains its fruition for ourselves because in our mind, we by truly feeling that happiness, it's as if we have already got it, which will translate into physicality with time, but we would have already essenced that happiness, so it is more or less we have conquered the desire, or it has already happened, or it's about to happen. Saira. Thank you very much, Satish. Yes, Sister Aruna. Hmm. Brother, the jealousy always comes when there is a comparison. Yeah. If you don't compare, in spirituality, you shouldn't have any compare. You shouldn't compare yourself with others. You, you yourself, has to focus on God and move on. And that that way of keeping your state of mind, you will be happy for the other person because what you are getting, that person is not getting. So you have to understand that also. Everyone is given with something. You have to be content. And uh, with that, and the content and the comparison is not there, then jealousy won't be coming there. This is my way of thinking. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Anyone else? Someone else? Okay, sister Ananti, please. Uh, Sai Ram, in one of the discourses, Swami indicated that that is uh, once uh, uh, sports meet day. Swami uh, uh, called all the winners and the winners of the maybe that particular game or something. And the Swami told the winners that you should be really grateful to the losers. 
because of their hard work and the intense competition you practiced more and you were able to win that's why you always should be very grateful to the losers i don't know whether practically in the worldly life whether we appreciate the losers that's a different question but swami said that winners should always be grateful to the losers and also swami told the losers that you also you know, maybe the, this is not the time for you maybe the another time you may win another competition yadi that kind of statement swami gave on that sports meet day in one of the discourses yadi that topic also swami beautifully nicely in the the elaborated or described that how to overcome the jealousy and the you know the, the and the fighting among the students and this and that uh, uh for for the uh, the discussion of the questions you know the, the to overcome the jealousy and the you know the, the other hatred and those things it's little hard i really appreciated brother arun's point that when other people are sad you know, they be always ready to in you know, the uh, share that sadness or grieving and those things when they are other people are happy in the worldly life we are very hesitant to take part of that happiness unless otherwise you are in you know, the in that level of very high spiritual level you know, the uh, the i don't know that the, the, it's, it's difficult to you know, the the put into our mind you know, the even we can say that worldly life people you know, the they may you know, it may be hard for them the spiritual people it would be very easy to take the oneness principle but in real life you know the we have to have really take that sort of sadhana you know the to take that level thank you siren thank you sister thank you anyone else has something to say brother yes i really don't understand how we cannot be happy when another person is happy you know that shouldn't we shouldn't think even that happiness we supposed to participate only you are you preventing your jealousy that is you are comparing to yourself other than that we shouldn't have that thought even we how we get as uh, like uh, their happiness uh, you get some kind of jealousy or something you don't like why that is something you have to question yourself not others you have to really have to work i think like that only is you should there shouldn't be any jealousy and hesitant to participate in other people's happiness aruna all are not same just we have to remember that all are not same each one of us we have our own individuality and we develop our own quality qualities of mind so it it, it is not it's difficult to expect people to be like that but if we can try what swami is trying to tell us see the oneness in everybody if we can try and uh, with great attempt with great difficulty we can reach that level uh, especially who are spiritually oriented they won't feel that as you say but uh, the uh, common man um, when, when we have got so many kinds of people in on this earth each one is difficult, different each one has got his own way of thinking then aunty we have to be very careful celebrating something happiness obviously we should know, but uh, celebrating uh, is a, like a something uh, to learn from it right up, up to us it is very nice because if somebody is prospering somebody is very happy we feel the same happiness because yes my brother my sister she is happy we, we are a part of it when we think that the same divinity resides in everyone <laughs> okay sairam thank you sairam Yes, brother Tarsan. Yeah, so Sairam, brother. Even uh, uh, Swami's uh, mentioned many times, desire is like a fire. 
because you are not going to satisfy anything because of the desire only you are getting the ego, jealousy, everything spoil your life. So you have to have the desire only with the God. Other desires all is not permanent. So whatever you have God has given to you, be happy with that. Don't uh, 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 if you go and more more desire if one if you achieve that one you want another desire. If that is fulfilled, then you want another one. If you keep on keep on adding adding adding, then eventually uh, you are going to lose everything in your mind and the spiritual side. Thank you, brother Saira. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share? Okay, let's. Uh, I think everyone has said, so I will just share my piece of thought also. I think Kalyani's question was should we not entertain desire, number one? Number two, isn't it difficult to have a sense of jealousy? Even see, jealousy means it's not that um, you know somebody has and I don't want them to have. I would also like to have. You know that itself is a it's one uh, shade of jealousy, because we are. Um, I think that way, sister. I don't know. Said you know, don't compare. Um, so, but the thing is, in life, we compare. You know, if I don't have a job, will I be is happy? If there's no money at home, we don't have food. Uh, the somebody else in the other uh, home next door has. Will we be happy or will we feel sad? Uh, the reality is, you it's in especially when we don't have something which we want to have and which we feel it's needed, we can always feel uh, a bit jealous or you know feel sad that you know, even if we want to call that that we don't have that. So that that doesn't mean that uh, I should say I don't have uh, a job. You know I don't have money. I will just stay home. Should I have not have this? You know, these are practical questions for people uh, for what's essential, not necessarily the luxuries. But then, um, but when the luxuries get involved, it becomes much more complicated uh, because once we are trained. So I think from all this, I think what comes to light is what is the right type of desire which we can have? I think Brother Dasan mentioned about having desire for God. Um, but we also have certain wishes. And if you want, don't want to call them desire, we, we have to have some wish. If we don't have the wish, we will not even make any effort. So that wish is important. But the problem with desire is that we want that to be ours. That, you know, Mama, and I possess this. This belongs to me. And I think that's the one which causes problem. Um, so I think once we know that this is a problem area from a spiritual perspective, I think we have to start looking at what should be the type of desire from a worldly perspective we have to have. The, the desire should not be based on competition. Uh, if it is based on competition, there will always be bound to be some form of jealousy. You know, if I want to become first in something, if we become second, you know, how much ever we say, I don't have jealousy, we would want to be one day first. That means you are definitely jealous because when we become first, then of course, as somebody said, Sister Anand said, you should be grateful for, you should show your gratitude to everyone. But the thing is, if we want to become the first in something, we will strive. And when somebody else gets, we think I have not gotten it. So I should still strive for it. So I think Swami would say, your desire should not be based on competition. Your desire should be based on excellence. Am I doing better than I did? Um, you know, if there may be competition, somebody gets prize that's secondary to be improving ourselves. So all of our desires should be um, just excellence, but not in comparison to somebody else's achievement. I think once we cultivate that, I think we, you know, the chance of jealousy will be less. Then, you know, we will say, you know, how can I do this better? Can I do this better? 
Um, I think that will be the only thought which will come and then we will accept that in our lifetime, we may never get the first prize, but that's okay. But have we striven to become, improve ourselves and offer whatever we have achieved to God? Uh, I think those are, cultivate, those are things which we have to cultivate. That way we will keep ourselves motivated. I think that was the question Sister Dhammi, uh, Narmada also asked, uh, along with Sister Kalyani, you know, because this wish or desire, you know, it, it impels us to action, but it should be such that it should not cause jealousy. So I think we should be very careful what type of desires we cultivate. Uh, so, and uh, which actually, and the brother, just to, and I'm talking a lot maybe, but the Dazan said we should have desire for God because in the world, whatever is created, there's a limitation. You know, there's only so much is available. So, you know, if we take larger share, others will be deprived. But in the case of God, you can have any amount and everyone can have the same equal amount or more because it is limitless, infinite. Uh, so that way we will not compete against anyone. Uh, how much or we want, we can have. Um, thank you very much. Sorry for uh, holding forth, Sir. Adding one more point to this, God, if we have firm faith in the Lord, He knows what to give, when to give, and the best way He gives. So if we have, we have to have that patience to wait for Him to give. I would like to add this one, Sir. Thank you very much. brother. Uh, add to the auntie's point too, only we can ask uh, whatever we know from the God. Even, uh, even the wistful tree can provide us what we know, but the God can give us what we don't know, that uh, uh, bliss, that uh, ultimate goal. He can give that. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, brother. So we should ask uh, Sister Kalyani and Sister Narmada whether they still desire to know something more. So. Sorry, Uncle. Thank you. Yes. So, so you were saying in terms of desires, it's okay to have desires around self-improvement, essentially. Like. Yes. Yeah. But in, in in terms of self improvement, that means um, not in a worldly way, but in 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 our spirituality and things like that. Yes, I would say so. But if we want some worldly improvement, we should pray to God rather than compete with anyone else. <laughs> if it's a need, as Santi said, God will fulfill it in His own time, according to the what He thinks is best for us. Mm -hmm. Shraddha and Saburi, patience and perseverance. Brother, so just I'm asking, you know, sometimes we ask from God, which is at the point of time we will think that we need it, but you know. As then we realize why we ask. <laughs> Sister, when people are going to ask you to give some examples. That is you. Everybody would have encountered in their <laughs> life, right? I'm just saying. because So therefore, it's not too better not to ask. So that's what uh, even Swami said. I came to this world to give something valuable. But the people are asking small, small things. I want to get this one. I want to get my, my my son to get married, my daughter get married. I want to get rid of the sick. Nobody didn't ask the final goal, liberation. So my bus, you know, when I'm, when I'm going, I want to take someone, but nobody's prepared to come with me. Thank you, Saira. I don't brother. Thank you. When you give up, like, you know, if you give up a lot of your worldly desires, um, and then, like, do you ever feel sometimes just like, 
restless or like a sense of dissatisfaction. And then like, if you do feel that way, I don't know, there's like an urge to kind of, you know, work harder towards your worldly goals. But then, yeah, I just, I'm uh, when you do start to give it, give up things, it kind of feels like you're being passive about your life. And if you're not happy, if you're dissatisfied, then it's your own doing because you didn't really work for it or um, you kind of gave up. It... Good question. Good question, Kalyani. So I'll again, open it up uh, for anyone's input. So in general, you know, when we start giving up this worldly desire, sometimes we have a sense of, you know, uh, that being lost, feel lost, uh, you know, and a bit confused also, I would say. I think, is that right, Kalyani? Something like that? Yes. Yes. A sense of emptiness even sometimes. Are we doing the right things? Are we not striving for the right things? Anyone who would like to share your thoughts? So, Sairam, brother, in my experience, uh, our, you know, our, it's just a lot of people have a lot of experience. You don't need to give up anything when you are in the going on the spiritual path. It will go away without your knowledge. So, how many people are participating in this study circle? And mm -hmm. if anything comes up, you always give up those one worldly things. So, when we go to the mall, those days, uh, after this, uh, you can you can put it in yourself after learning this uh, 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 Gita. You don't feel like to go to the mall before you might go to the mall and you wanted to buy uh, that 10 days one, you admire those kind of things. And now that admiring thing, you, uh, you can see it yourself is coming less. Otherwise, before you want to think, okay, I want to buy five houses, six houses. Now you will think, okay, I have one house that's enough for me. That satisfaction, you can see it yourself. That experience, you would have had it now before we finishing this uh, uh, the, this book. And you can compare uh, all kinds of things in your lifetime. You always think, I'm happy now. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, brother. Anyone else would like to share anything? Zaira Maran. Yes, Auntie. Um, of course, we begin, beginning time, we maybe have a jealous and all those things. But when we are spiritually growing, we have to cut down all those things and desires and everything. And uh, you have to think, Swami knows everything what you want. And we don't know what we want. But Swami knows what we need, what we, he's, he, he is the giver, he's the compassionate person. I mean, uh, Swami is the one is, uh, uh, we have to adore and uh, always we wanted to have a Swami's, uh, um, uh, what do you call the blessing and everything. But we have to think, Swami knows everything, what we want, what we need. So I think that's, that's, I don't know if it makes sense, but um, that's what I would like to say. Thank you very much, Kanti. Thank you. Yes, Sister Aruna. Saira, brother, this is come something interesting now again. Brother, if you are giving up something, when you feel that you lost something or you have not uh, content with that, that means you didn't lose it. You didn't give up. It's automatically it has to go from you and you have to earn the satisfaction within what you are doing. Otherwise, you have not given that your mind is there. That's why you are losing your uh, happiness there. So you did lose. This is the way I think. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you very much. I think... Yeah, correct. Chapter 3 in the Bhagavad Gita gives some of these answers. But anyway, I will ask Brother Uncle Gopalan, please go ahead. Sai Ram, uh, we, we all know the story of Ramayana. And uh, when Rama and Sita and Lakshmana were in the forest, all of a sudden a golden deer appeared. And Sita 
in spite of having everything what she wanted she said i want that golden deer and rama probably said when you have me what else do you want you're going after you want that golden deer but she was adamant she wanted the golden deer and the consequences of that is the whole other things happening after that so it's an example for all of us what uh, of of uh, desire i don't know maybe maya is a cause for that what are the consequences for for desire thank you thank you very much uncle thank you anyone else has something to say i don't know yes sir i'm sorry uh, so like swami says um, the, it's all about the mind you turn left you get locked you turn right you get free so it's the same mind uh, that is now tricking me into thinking that i have given up something and uh, life has become more passive what am i doing with my life uh and and it's the same mind that can be guided into thinking that this is an opportunity given more to think of the lord and get into it is like we are holding the world with one hand and swami's feet with another hand kind of a situation and slowly it is to let go of the grasp on the world with that other hand and put both hands on swami's feet completely so even as we are moving from the two hands on the world to one hand on the world to no hands on the world that whole process is more and more to tighten the hold on swami's feet so that the releasing of the grasp on the world even as we do that that same mind doesn't trick us into that kind of a passivity loss of ambition and oh i am doing this am i doing the right thing am i going the right way kind of a scenario it is more and more to hold on with all that faith that swami will take care and draw inspiration from the lives of thousands of devotees of the lord who have walk this path earlier that's where that whole thing of satsangat way in sangatam that whole the getting into that thing of the good company which constantly reiterates as to which is permanent which is impermanent and constantly uh, with that constant reminder coming in time and again it will reinforce that what is being done is the right thing in terms of the road less uh, taken in terms of spirituality constant reinforcing uh, and all of that sadhana that goes along with it which comforts the mind once again into the path that it is just a bit more of going down that path and that we will because you're used to instant gratification in world i give a 10 dollar bill i get a commodity that i want so obviously the mind is expecting i do 10 uh, or i do 1008 or 10000 chance of swami's name and instantly i will get this but then we know in the path of spirituality it is god's design however it has to happen at the right time it will happen so for us to move away from that sense of passivity and having lost everything is to continuously remind that swami is there he is taking care of us whatever happens is good for us and holding on to that framework will help the mind again go from turning left to turning right sir Thank you very much, Sai Satish. Any other thoughts? Yes, Sai Ram, brother. I like to pray some more thing. So yes. the desire comes when you are in your young young age. When your uh, five senses are sound good, then you have desire. When you get older, the senses are going down. That time you don't have any desire. That time you want the spiritual. That spiritual also you have to have a senses supposed to be sound good. then only you can practice you can do all the sadhanas or so now you have to understand so you spend all your time not the permanent thing when the old age come you are thinking about oh, why you did okay why did i spend my whole time on one thing desires and everything i lost the purpose of the life thank you brother i am brother thank you <laughs>
Hey, you are, you know, you are scaring everyone here now. Because uh, everyone is young brother, unless uh, except you maybe. So, <laughs> so they see, oh my gosh, when will we become old? You know, that's what they are thinking. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> there is a saying, there is a saying in Sanskrit, Vruddhanari Pativrataha. Vruddhanari <laughs> Pativrataha, you don't have to do that. If you want to be Pativrata right from child, from the moment that you are married to a person, let us follow that. No, giving up at the age of uh, the, uh, 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 the older age is not sacrifice at all. Sacrifice comes right at the beginning of your, when you understand these worldly things are not permanent with me. So let us try to give up. And after giving up, as Kalyani says, if remnants of those desire still remain in our, it's not, it's not Tyaga. It's not at all the Tyaga. Tyaga comes Breath. completely. Yes, Aruna. Auntie, what is the word you have said, Auntie? Auntie, you have to translate. Because they are all young answers. Auntie, yeah. they didn't understand it. Vridhanari means old woman. Huh? Old woman is the perfect Pativrata. Pativrata is fantastic. No one wants her anyway, no? So she doesn't have any choice. <laughs> An old woman, she is easy, easy for her to be Pativrata. Okay. That she yes. will not look at any other man. You know, <laughs> okay. No man will look at okay. Her. Okay. I got it now. Chastity, <laughs> chastity. She maintains at yes, yes. That's not it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Old? Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I got it now. Anything I, I'm just saying. Anything you give up, it's easy on you. Give it up. That's how you have to feel okay. it. Everything yeah. when you give up, you have to make it has to give you a satisfaction, happiness with that give it, giving up something. Yeah. If you keep that smallest ray of desire in your heart after giving up, that's no that's no sacrifice at all. No, no. It's not so what do you do? What do you do if you do still have the desire even after giving up something? Do you does it mean you should not give it up? And <laughs> what is the question, Kalyani, again? If you do still have that remnant of desire after giving up something, then does that mean that you should not you should not have given it up? That maybe you should pursue it? Or yes. don't regret after giving it, giving yes. it up. But if you want to have it, let you enjoy, better enjoy. When you come to a stage on your on your own, that you, it goes away. That's what uh, Dr. Uh, Brother Dasan was saying. It should just automatically should leave you. If you have oh. that remnants of desire, that that's not that's not a uh, yeah this thing at all, sacrifice at all. Yeah. So anything that you are giving up, you sh you shouldn't have a little bit of desire. That means you are still pondering over it. You have the desire. What's the point of giving up then? That there's no point for you to give. That's the thing. The people goes on just an example. People go on vegetarian. If you have desire, please, you have to get rid of it from the root itself. That's that's how it has to come. Otherwise, it's no point. You still yeah. has a desire, then I don't think that you have given. That's how I we have to. Anything yeah. that you give up, give up. Don't think. Don't look back. <laughs> so I will look at it. Thank you, Saira. And Swami's example is holding is the problem. Giving, dropping is easy. It's like a handkerchief or keychain. Dropping is easy. Holding is the difficult one. So, so um, Saira, um, I think so Kalyani's question was, okay, fine, we have to give up. We have to, how do we give up the desire? I think that's a question. How do we give up the desire? If uh, the, the purpose of the give up, you have to find out, is it going to be helpful for my spiritual path? You have to ask the questions, the Viveka. So when you think about that one, definitely you can give up. Okay, thank you, brother. Brother, give up has to give you satisfaction. 
Yeah, but it's not giving satisfaction. What to do? Then don't give up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> in fact, in fact, as far as possible. <laughs> don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know it's... Uh... Yeah, it's the uh, difference between give up and give up, right? Um, in the sense, you give it up or you give up. So, uh, <laughs> give it so up. yeah, so what I'm saying is, um, it is always about substituting. If we have something on the low desire with the high desire, can we shift gears, right? The focus, because what our mind is drawn to is where consciousness flows. Um, and what stays, of course, we have been telling, yeah, it's not about giving it up physically. It's about giving it up mentally as well. That is where we have given it up totality and all of that. So if the desire is still there and anything can be burnt with the fire, so it is about going and switching in gears to that higher desire, which will take weed away the lower desire, which were, which was what Brother Dasan was telling earlier in terms of desire for God and so on. So it's about how much of our time the mind is trying to dwell on the other desire or basically the, it has become a desire from a thought pattern that has become stronger with time and gained a root as a desire. So to weed that away, if we can channelize the mind again to something that we feel is more ennobling or towards Swami, it is slowly, it is those impressions that are there in the mind of that lower desire with time and Abhyasa Yogena, the same thing, keep doing it so that when the thought comes instead of flowing left, now it will flow right. So that kind of a thing if we keep doing it with time it is not as easy as um, uh, giving it away physically because the impressions in the mind stays and we keep channelizing the thought process repeatedly even as it comes back again we guide it every time it tries to go left guide send it right with time then the mind gets accustomed to a level where it the impressions in the mind go away as well with when the desire gets completely, the lower desire gets eradicated completely and what stays is the higher desire which is more ennobling or drawing to Swami. So replace your uh, lower nature, lower uh, uh, So thank you very much. I said, Auntie, I, ah. I don't know, at least I am not hearing you. Yeah. yeah. No, what Satish Sai Satish was saying, you know, replace uh, your lower desires by a higher, uh, noble, nobler desire, so that you know this lower desire will automatically be can be erased. When we when we want God, when we want when we go for Swami, so our lower desires might get slowly and slowly, it get uh, it can get wiped out. Saira. Saira. Sai Ramadi, thank you very much. Yes, Prabhu oh. you want to say something? Yeah, we studied before the desire. You have to think about whether it's Sriya or Priya. Sriya is always good. Priya is not good. Am I right, Auntie? So go for the Sriya. Shreyas. Shreyas, Shreyas, yeah. Shreyas versus Priyas. So, sorry, I lost something. Yeah. Uh, if you have desire comes, Sriya, Sriya or Priya. Priya, both are giving um, happiness. But Sriya is always based on to the spiritual side. And Priya is always based on the worldly happiness. So your path supposed to be Sriya's side. Thank you. Uh, one more thing in service Swami has said whenever you serve people you have to drive the enjoyment if you don't have any enjoyment don't give up so you have to enjoy too not only satisfaction you have to by giving up you have to enjoy that also yeah. thank you Saira <coughs> Saira 
Sairam, just to add uh, a little point uh, on the current discussion, uh, we all strive to be a great person instead of a good person. Swami has uh, told in several discourses the the great person uh, comes with the individual yirdi, individual education, individual wealth, individual position, and those things makes you to be a great person. But the uh, Swami says, God loves the good person. Instead of being a great person, you have to develop yourself to be a good person. Good person comes with uh, the, you know, the uh, even the desire, you know, to to determine what kind of desire I should be having. Uh, we can ask a couple of questions: whether my desire is going to just satisfy myself or it would be helping out the others in in the in the family level maybe the community level and the national level or uh, so the desire my desire the the uh, because right now we have expanded a little bit of lower desire can be replaced with the higher level desire or higher desire so if we ask the question my desire is going to uh, help other people or whether it would be uh, some sort of you know, the, the uh, asset or it's going to elevate some other people you know the, whether it would give not only myself it would give me the satisfaction it would also bring the happiness and the satisfaction of others then you know the, the we can we can think about you know, the, whether my desire is good for myself or maybe you know, the i have to improve my desires towards the other side right side uh, maybe the, that's the way we can eliminate our desire lower desires with the higher desire and swami uh, maybe uh, in in the educator system kind of you know the discourse swami reiterated this point in the don't be to become the um, great person always in the uh, make yourself to be good person that would last forever and it would take you the uh, destination or it would you would achieve with that one the goal of your life thank you saira Thank you very much, sister. Anyone desires to share any thoughts? So, Desire. <laughs> yeah. So I. So then. Okay. Then let's say maybe I am the only one who left with the desire now. <laughs> so, so. So I will. Uh, um, I think Kalyani would be say, "Oh my gosh." They are also talking about so many things, but I I also pray to Swami. I also have my goal of reaching Swami, but still some of the worldly desires are not letting me go. And when I try to give them up, I have a sense of emptiness, a sense of you know of being lost and so on. I think that's I think that's what at least I understood from the question. So Kalyani, I think um, see we have had many lifetimes living in this body having a body uh, we have had taken many life you know many lives we have spent so we have all developed certain addictions addiction to the world addiction to our own self sense of self is not very easy to give up because um, just like any person any addict they will have withdrawal symptoms and you know the they will feel they have to go back to it this is actually the condition of everyone. Um, generally, but we don't even realize that we have desires because things are all doing well, going well for us in life. Uh, so sometimes we don't realize that we don't have desires. We have desires, we don't even know. So I think uh, the first thing is to accept for ourselves that we are addicted and we are trying to get over an addiction. 
So we need to surrender to somebody who can treat it, which is God. So we should not feel depressed that we have still not fully recovered from the addiction. I think that's the first thing. We have to be realistic. The second thing is using some discrimination to understand that this world and whatever this world gives us is only a means, not the end. It's a means in the sense, it's a means for us to reach our final goal. But if the means become the end, you know, like, you know, for example, some money is needed for us to lead a normal life. But then making money becomes the end itself, the goal itself, then it becomes a problem. So we should understand whatever we get in this world, whether it's money, whether it's family, whether people, resources, time, everything, is actually a means for a final end, final goal. And the final goal we should properly choose, which is uh, uh, meaningful, which is permanent, which is lasting, which will give us everything. So I think by constant discrimination to re remind ourselves that this world and what it gives us is only a means for one goal, which should be our priority. And that will also help to deal with this problem of you know uh, eradicating desire. The third one everyone has spoken about, you know, we should do sadhana, you know, we should think of the Lord, which Krishna himself has said, think of me as often as possible, pray to me, and slowly that will replace everything else. And we will not suffer uh, from, uh, you know, freeing ourselves from the addictions which just come with us for thousands of lifetimes. And, you know, some of them will be vasanas which are dormant and suddenly they will sprout and they will say what happened to me I, I thought i was good all this time and suddenly i am now you know these desires are you know plaguing me uh, you know this can happen to anyone until we uh, we die you know we had to be vigilant and watchful and uh, we need to get god's help we need to uh, you know again and again remind ourselves the world is temporary and it's only serves a purpose for us to reach the final goal and then hold on to God tightly uh, and not feel bad that we are still struggling with these remnants of desires and uh, the antics of the mind. I think that's, uh, I think it's a realistic way to deal with life. Um, and, you know, I'm just, I was listening to everyone and I just pulled everything in and tried to summarize the way I understood. I hope that's okay. Sister Aruna, please go ahead. Sairam, brother. Always we talk about the unity, word, thought, and deed. When you think of giving, you, everything has to synchronize at once. So I just wanted to add to that too. Thank you, Sairam. Sairam, sister. Sairam. Yes, brother Thasan. Yes, Sairam, brother. One more thing we didn't uh, uh, add to the point. If we didn't achieve the desire, it's going to bring the anger. Anger is going to screw up everything in your lifetime. Everything. So desire is not good. That, that's my thing, brother. Thank you, Saira. Saira, brother. Thank you. Saira. So it's 4.29. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's, uh, I think we seem to have reached a certain level of discussion. <laughs> I think we have Heard a lot. We will have a week to digest and come back. Um, I think we can, if everyone is okay, uh, we can close the session and meet again next week. Sairam, everyone. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant. Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant. Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant Om Shanti 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 Sairam everyone Sairam Sairam Thank you Sairam Thank you Sairam